Brethren, peace to the Lord. We're going to open our Bibles in Luke. Chapter Amen. Luke 8, verse 38 and 39. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaiming throughout the whole city, what great things Jesus had done for him. Amen. You may be seated. Is there a song?
Brincadeira das cadeiras. <risos> Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. My brethren, this song, it speaks of what the, the same thing as the text that we just read. This uh, praise has been our experience with God because it was, it was in this way that the Lord has operated on the heart of his servants. And it is in the same way that we testify of the great God that we have. Because God, when he operates, when God finds an open heart, when God finds uh, a sincere heart, he operates wonders and he operates the impossible. Because our God is great. Our God is powerful. Our God is justice, his love, his mercy, his grace. And this is, this was the experience of this man that we just read here in the, on the word of the Lord. This man that, that was already completely um, defeated. He already uh, was waiting for death. A man that was uh, possessed by demons, oppressed, oppressed by the enemy. So just so you can have an idea, his house was the cemetery. The point of reference of this man was the tomb where he lived. He had a family, but he didn't live in his house. He wandered on the streets, sometimes naked. Sometimes he was imprisoned. They put uh, shackles on him, and it would break everything because of the, the great oppression that took him over, and he would uh, get out of uh, the shackles and would go back to his tomb. That was his life. Imagine a man living this way, without any hope, without peace without being able to live with his loved ones, without being able to live with his family, being despised by everyone, rejected by everyone, for sure. Even his own family, without any option, rejected him. How can I allow a, a person in that situation, this situation, to be near your own children? to live with uh, the wife or the relatives. The situation was very difficult. I don't blame the family regarding this situation. They had no option. I don't think that even he wanted to live in his own house because he always came back to the tomb. Because he went back because he knew that his life was already um, he already given up on his life. He was just waiting for his death. His reference was the tomb because he for sure wanted to just fall and never get up again. Not even the police, not even the guards would uh, be able to handle him, to calm him down, to keep him under control, to hold him, detain him. And it is interesting that one day he met with Jesus. 
and on this meeting, the moment in which Jesus was passing by, during his ministry, Jesus walked a lot. And all his wanderings, wherever he passed by, Jesus was always inside of God's time. Jesus only walked through revelation. Jesus didn't choose where he was going. He was guided by the Spirit. He only followed God's agenda, of, agenda of the Father, and was pleasing to God at that moment for Jesus to pass exactly on the place where this man was. And when this happens, immediately this man was delivered. That oppression, the demons that were possessing this man, that were taking possession of this man, controlling his speak, the way he acted, controlling his attitudes, they were reproached. They were, they were all spelled by the power of the voice of Jesus. When man has a contact with Jesus, when man has a contact with what is spiritual, when man enters in God's time, man is delivered. There is no power greater than the power of God. It doesn't exist. Because our God is great. So then, a few days pass by, and that man now, he meets once again with Jesus. Now he was transformed, delivered completely, transformed, because Jesus gave him a new hope. Jesus gave him a new beginning. Jesus gave him an opportunity for him to show now that he was a man saved in Jesus, that now he had a destiny, destination, and now he had luck. Now he was not walking according, according to his own will, but according to the will of the Father. And he was so amazed with that, that he asked Jesus, Jesus, let me stay. I want to follow you. I want to be one of your disciples. I want to walk beside you wherever you go. And Jesus gave him a word as, as, as this. Go home and tell how many great things God has done for you. And he went. And he now went walking, not, not anymore as a person that was despised, not like a craze, a person oppressed, a mad person, but now as a delivered person, saved in Jesus. He was telling, for sure, glorifying the Lord, and testifying of the power of God in his life. He went back to his house. And my brethren, this word, he reminds us of many people that we know. People that are counting their days, days toward death. People that are counting their days, waiting without any meaning for life. People that wake up they are ready, immediately upset with their own lives, sad, anguished, oppressed. Many people are like that. And people that we might even know, relatives, friends, people close to us, people that you, when you look at them, they early in the morning. When you see the, the traffic there, people have no patience. They want to honk their car, they want to cut us off and, and curse us. If you, if you allow yourself, you end up competing with them. If you are not in fellowship, you end up cursing back. And this struggle begins. You even may lose your blessing early in the morning. You leave home already pleading to the Lord, and you meet a crazy man like this on the street trying to cut you off. Why didn't he wake up early, <laughs> earlier? People like that, people that have no patient, patience with anything, they have no project of life, they have no pleasure in living. People that are living, waiting for their death without any joy. 
But what is important is that the Church of the Lord, we as a church, we have this duty of going to the streets, preaching, and spreading the news of the Lord, how many good things has done for us. This is the mission of the church. For as long as we stay here, although we want to be with heaven, the more, even though we want to be with the Lord in eternity, we have a mission here. We need to go back to our the point of to our point of reference. No longer the tomb, no longer the cemetery, but to the place where we have an opportunity to preach the gospel, and the church needs to do this. We need to pray to the Lord, Lord. Give me grace. Give me meetings that are productive. Lord, bless my day so that my day may be a day in which I have opportunity to speak of our power and testify of the operation of the Lord in my life, the miracle that the Lord once performed in me for the cure, for the deliverance, for the transformation, for the hope that, we ha that I have uh, of living. My brethren, this is all part of our mission as a church and the Lord has conclaimed us for this the Lord has shown tonight a woman that entered here and she thinks that she no longer has a solution she has done everything that she could do she has come to her, her end and the Lord is saying no it's not over for as long as you're here you testify of my power on your life and my brethren, that's what we need to do as a church. That's what we need to do as brethren in Christ. How many people are around us if we analyze? How many people there are on our circle of friends and people in our family that need salvation, Jesus? If we look around, this church should have been small. The church should have been even feel like it was too small for us. We should have left this place long, long ago, even renting a place. I'm going to inform the brethren that the offer to the place was accepted. We made an offer and the owner, just so I don't forget, we made an offer to a location, the owner accepted, and now we need to um, take care of a few details with the city, the bureaucracy, so that we can adapt a new place to be a church. So uh, we would like to ask the brethren to in prayer so that those battles are also overcome. And soon we'll be also in this new place if the Lord per allow us. It is reason for us to glorify the Lord. It is a reason for us to once again glorify the Lord because great things the Lord has done for us. And the Church of the Lord needs to live like this, speaking of the Lord, testifying of the power of God. Because we would have, uh, we have nothing else to do in our days when we went with Jesus. Our, our days are counted towards eternal life. That man completely despised, abandoned, forsaken. Now he began to do the work of the uh, kingdom of of God and we as a church of God we need to do to perform our own role because in the same way God changed our lives some were we were in a harder situation some in a situation that was not so difficult but in the same way whenever we meet with Jesus we leave that meeting blessed because there is no one that may come to meet with God. No one can find another person and meet another person that has greater love than Jesus has for us. Because Jesus knows us. He knows your pain. He knows what you need. He knows your necessity. He knows what afflicts you. He knows what shakes you. He knows. He knows our entire life. He knows details of our lives. And that's why Jesus always comes towards men. And tonight, he came to meet this woman that is living also a, mo a difficult moment in her life, for sure. She is 
probably giving up on anything, on everything, uh, ready to let go of everything. Don't do this. The Lord wants to give you and your family a new beginning. This is not time for you to give up. We have no time to waste. The second coming of Jesus is near. We need to fight, fight for our blessing. We need to fight to preserve our salvation because what Jesus has done for us was something great. A high price was paid for us. So now we, we are new creatures in Jesus. Today we have reason to wake up and glorify the Lord. Today we have uh, reason for uh, when we come home at the end of the day we have to we can glorify the Lord for the deliverance, for the blessings received, the trials, they will continue. But the blessings of the Lord will also continue in our lives because one day He was able to reach us. Because one day He changed our lives and He gave us this privilege of being called children of God of being called servants of a God who is alive, a God that knows man and loves to bless man. Amen. May God bless us tonight with this word, with his word, and you for sure. If, if the Lord spoke with you with the spiritual gift, a part of the spiritual gift, we need you need to pray to the Lord. Don't give up. Never give up. Because God never gave up on you. God will never give up on you. For as long as there is breath of life in you, the w desire of the Lord is to save you. So fight for your blessing. Fight for blessing on your home, on your family. Because that's what God has for you. Amen. Let us hear a song.
Glory to God. Let us stand up, my brother. Gonna have a word of glorification to the Lord. I want to praise your name once again. We want to recognize your greatness. Recognize that without your blood shed on the cross, we would not be here. Thank you, Lord, for your great love. Thank you, Lord, because in a very special way, you have visited my house this week, you have visited my heart, especially in this day today. Lord, you are a God that satisfies every desire of our heart. I want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done in my house today. Thank you, Lord, because you have taken care of your people. You are a loving God. How good God is to trust in you, to wait and on you, Lord. Because you know that the greatest promise is about to come when you come to take us, Lord. Sustain us, Lord, and protect us every day. Because it, it, the Lord is what we need, Lord. Thanks for the service, for this word that came as a renewal to our hearts. Thank you for this revealed word for your spiritual gift that was given to your church. Thanks for the praises, Lord. Thanks because we have a place where we can adore your name, Lord. Lord, thank you for this wonderful service that you have already prepared for us from eternity. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Receive, Lord, our adoration, our praise, because we are thankful to you because of all your deeds, for the blessings received, for the miracles operated, for the deliverance that many times we don't even notice. But we want tonight, in a single voice, thank you, and to say that we love you, and to say that we want to be with you eternally, Lord. Lord, bless your people, your entire people, even those that were for any reason may not have been able to come to the service, and those uh, uh, that are also watching the service online, go towards them, bless and operate on in the way that only you can do. And also your servants that coming back from Port St. Lucie, deliver them from any evil and accident. Bless all your, our, our brethren in the way you can do, Lord. And there's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. You know, in, we want to say that the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. Tomorrow we're going to have our Sunday school, 10.30. I uh, would like to have the bread and present. We're going to have a special word geared towards praise. So I'd like to invite the brethren to be present so that together we may learn the mysteries of the Lord. And tomorrow night also a service at 7.30, an evangelistic service, and 6.15 is a meeting with the youth. Uh, ask the brethren to pray for the, the, merit, the wedding, junior and the, and the bride. Was it was has it been read? From the 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 Monday forward, we're going to be praying for our neighbors so that the Lord may save them. So the Lord may give us uh, grace to evangelize them because they're going to be a, a target of our prayer every month of August. And to all the peace. Peace of the Lord. The marriage is going to be marriage is going to be the 18th. I haven't seen the. <laughs> it's going to be on the Church of Hollandale. When I got uh, there, it is. There it is. Our brethren, Saturday, special Sabbath of Vianna Dantas and Sister Christiane Dantas, Antonio Felix Pajet and Rosangela Dantas, invite all the brethren to a service of glorification to the Lord for the what of their children, Larissa and Sabado Jr. in the Church of Hollandale. So all the brethren get ready to be there. We are not going to have a service on this day because we will all be there praising the, the name of the Lord. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. Now we're going to have a meeting with Group B soon after the assistance.
geralmente eu chego, 